the psychologist asks you, why do you accept it? Because we must accept reality if we're going to live. Because if we don't, it's an illusion. We have to... Why do you accept it? Because it's there, because it's real, because these are people and I care about them. And if I don't care about what it is that they're doing, then I don't care about them. And well, do, should, should I live blind and pretend that it, it doesn't exist? Um, yeah, am, I, am I bulletproof? No. Nobody, nobody's, nobody's bulletproof, right? We all get hurt. Um, and when people are negative towards us, when they don't like us, if they're nasty, if they have hate, these things play on our relationships psychologically. And um, they, they affect us. And uh, sometimes more than what is physical because what is physical we can try to heal in some kind of physical way but what is what is emotional is you know the emotional scars are are much more difficult to heal and people think that they don't matter because people think that you know if you if you cut someone with a knife it's terrible and it's a crime and you can go to prison but if you say to some Body, something really horrible and ugly and evil, like "ah, oh, fuck you, you bitch." That's that's not a crime. That's you know that's that's okay. Well, that's not okay, right? Because the person is hurt. Now, I don't think that a verbal crime is the same as a physical crime. I'm not arguing it's the same thing. I'm not because I I believe that we should all have free speech and we should all be able to say whatever it is that we want to say, the good, the bad, the ugly. I don't think we should limit language. But that doesn't mean that we should not be polite and respectful and careful and care for other people with our words and our thoughts and our ideas. And, uh, um, you know, what would be a loving, caring response to the situation? A loving, caring response would be and once again, this is we, we flip everything 180 degrees and we imagine the opposite. Imagine it's not hate. Imagine it's love, right? What would be a loving response? A loving response would be somebody coming to you and saying, thank you for coming into our family. We really respect the fact that it must be difficult for you to come into a family like our family where so many things are difficult meaning messed up, <laughs> um, and we realize that it's going to be hard for you to fit in, so we'd like you to know that um, we're here to support you in any way with anything that you need, and uh, you can call on us at any time, and we don't want you to think that we are thinking that uh, you're taking time away from us. We know that you need your time with our Father as much as we need with our Father, but you know, please respect the fact that, that we feel like we come first in, in this situation, but you know, we, I'm sure there's a way that we can all work things out, and we can all get a little bit of what we need. But that didn't happen, right? Because in 99% of cases, that doesn't happen. <laughs> because we're walking into a tornado. Where everything is spinning. And everyone is spinning. And it's chaos and disorder and confusion and angst and anger and anxiety and positioning and... Uh, fear and, and all of these things mixed in together that, that, that mean that the situation is not balanced and um, then it's it's very hard to uh, uh, to to come into that situation and what very often happens and I think this is maybe maybe true for you is that because you're an outsider coming in you can see more because the people from outside of the box have a greater perspective of what the box is, what the box means. And and that's a threat to people inside the box because, um, because everyone's built their reality on what is an 
in actual fact a fantasy. And the example for this is um, you have what's the classic example? Crabs. You know what crabs are? The sea creatures. Yeah, they got. Well, they, got, they got how many legs? Have crabs got six legs, eight legs. I don't know. Well, whatever. Anyway, um, and you get crabs and you put them in a bucket. Yeah. Now, the crabs can actually climb up and escape from the bucket. But what happens is that one crab climbs to the top, and all the other crabs reach up and pull that crab back down again. It's a common analogy because it's actually true. That if you get a, if you get crabs and put them in a bucket, it's actually possible for the crabs to escape. But what happens is the crabs at the bottom realize that if one person, if one crab escapes, then it changes the situation for everybody. So they, they pull the crab back down so the crab doesn't escape. So everybody could help everybody to have something which is more positive, which is better. Everybody could help everybody escape from the problem but everybody is so much invested in the problems existing that it's actually better for them to have the negativity than work or change to have the positivity or realize that there's another way to do things do you know that there's another way? Another way? Oh my gosh, oh no. Another oh, But we don't do that. We don't do that. Not in this family. No, 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 no. Right? Um, so, so the, the easiest thing to do is to attack the person who maybe has the weakest links in the situation, the newest member, perhaps, of, of, of the team. And, uh, and that's what happens in a lot of families. Um, they are, it's, at times it feels like people are dogs marking their territories. Yeah. Sometimes I had also this comparison. <laughs> Yeah, this is this is our space. This is our yeah, territory. Our this is our, yeah. And you you are in 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 Veta in Veta, you know? Oh yeah, yeah, space invader. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alien. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Ab so absolutely. Hope you are not welcome in this family, I was told. <laughs> well, well the, Yeah, look if you can't make the new people, the visitors, welcome. How is anybody ever going to be welcome? See, they're, they're, they're not. And the, the children will take their, the anger at their parents out on you because it's easier for them. It's easier for them to hate you than it is to hate their parents. Um, because what they don't understand is that love and hate are two sides of the same coin. You cannot hate something if there's not an element of love there. Because there's nothing to react against. In all hate, there is an element of love. But most people don't go deep enough to find out that. They just see hate on the surface. Because to hate something is to protect something, and to protect something is to love something. But the truth is you can't express love through hate, but people do that because they don't understand that it's two sides of the same coin. Mm. Well, it's ignorance to hate things or people that you don't understand. Mm -hmm. If you don't take time to get to know people, you don't understand them. So therefore, this argument that somebody hates you, they would have to know you really well to hate you. And, and there are people that I don't like very much, but um, I try to base my communication with them on some kind of intellectual concept where 
emotions are not really very relevant there. Um, look, it's, people go to work every day and go to school every day and get on with people that they don't like. Why can't they do it in other places? <laughs> I mean, going to school is just learning to manage your hate for people. That's, <laughs> what, <laughs> that's good. Be because, because you have to spend all day with people you don't like. Well, there's some people you like, but some you don't like, right? So, um, so you you have to manage your your own emotional state. So um, there's there are lessons to be learned from all experiences, and they're never the lessons that we're told that we should learn. They're they're always other lessons, you know. School, the lessons that people learn from school are very different from what people are told that they learn. You know, people learn very very useful abstract skills in school, like how to manage boredom. This is a school, it's a skill that students learn in school, how to manage boredom, because students spend most of their time bored to death in, in school, because they don't get to read anything they like, they don't get to study anything they're interested in, and they don't get to go anywhere that they want to go. So the result is they, they have to manage their own boredom. And so, uh, so the, there are all these skills that we can then, and and that we should apply to uh, uh, apply to life. Um, something that you said earlier, which uh, which which made me think, and uh, you know, I, I I feel like I have a little bell in the back of my brain that when somebody says something. Sometimes the bell rings and says, that's important. Stop for a moment. That's important. And something that you said was, uh, um, you said, you can't do things for people that they won't do for themselves, which is one of those general phrases or sayings in life that I have used myself and I know other people have used. But I'd like to push back and challenge on this idea a little bit because I think everything that's automatic can be challenged a little bit because whether we are successful or not in our challenge what's automatic will remain and so we're not going to hurt the idea if we challenge it but as a thought experiment um, you can't do things for people that uh, that they won't do for themselves. Mm -hmm. Con cons consider this. Mm -hmm. What if, what if you have to? Because they but, won't. But how? How? How can I do do something that the other one doesn't want? You know. Well, that's what being in a partnership is about. That you do something that the other person doesn't want. No. You have to do something for the other person that the other person is not able to do for themselves. Not that you can't do something for them that they don't want to do for themselves, but because they don't want to do it for themselves and you know that they need it. Okay, you, that's something you, different, you know. Yeah, you, you have to do it. Now... Um, Take this example. If there's a skill that's necessary for what you want to do in life and you can't do it, you either A, take the time to learn how to do it, but that still might not work, or you get or employ someone else to do it. You get help, right? You can't do it yourself. You need somebody else who has the skill or the ability or the knowledge. You mm -hmm. need outside help. Now, okay. whether you get the outside help or not, you still need the outside help. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the idea that you can't do things for people who won't do those things for themselves could be flipped. And you could argue that if people won't, if your partner won't do what they need to do for themselves, and you know they need to do it, 
and you know they're not going to do it. But you, you cannot you force them. You cannot force them. Like you know, you, you know, no, wait, 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 wait. You're let me let me be clear about this. You're not forcing anyone to do anything. Mm -hmm. You are doing the activity for them. Mm -hmm. See the difference. It's it's like if if he doesn't want to embrace me, I go and embrace him. For instance. Ah, uh, that crosses a couple of boundaries within the idea. That's that. Um, let me give you a different example. Um, let's say the car needs to be cleaned, right? Mm -hmm. And your partner's like, "Ah, I'm not going to clean the car. Whatever. I don't care. I'm not going to do it." Then you know that you need to take the car to be cleaned, or clean the car yourself, or pay someone else to clean the car. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, to help them, you have to do something. Mm -hmm. You can't let your partner's inability become your own disability. You can't let your partner's inability become your own disability. Now, go back to the original sentence. They won't do it, so you can't do it. You are making your partner's inability your own disability. Mm -hmm. The can't is dependent upon their won't. Mm -hmm. Because they won't, because they won't, you can't. And mm -hmm. therefore, you are powerless. Mm -hmm. And all... Uh, all positive management in relationships comes from empowering yourself, giving yourself the opportunity to 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 change something, not being passive, being active about the situations in the relationship. Years ago, many, many years ago, uh, I used to play in a music band and I wrote some songs and there was a line in one of the songs and I... I and when I wrote the line in the song, I was like, that's so true. And I still remember, I, I like 99% of the music and the lyrics. I forgot it all. But this one line stayed with me for like 20 years, which is waiting for someone to tell you they love you. is like waiting forever. You can't wait you have to go out and tell them that you love them and live with whatever consequences happen. Mm -hmm. If they tell you back they love you, great. If they tell, if they don't tell you back they love you, great. If nothing happens, great. If, if everything happens, great. But you can't paralyze yourself because other people are not doing what they need to do for themselves. Mm-hmm. Because if a person continues down that road, you will, de you will develop resentment to your partner and blame your partner for your problems. Because mm -hmm. you will be like, I didn't do this because you didn't do that. Mm -hmm. And you will then, your happiness will be dependent upon their actions. They won't act, so you won't be happy. Yeah, we, they also always say, okay, you can go and embra embrace him, you know, and be lovely. But, you know, after a while, you, 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 f you lose your motivation to do it because you ask yourself, why me all the time, you know? Mm -hmm. and I yeah. often heard it from other people as well. The same. Yeah, but, yes, but why me? Why me all the time? Because you are you. There's no one else. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. It's a great question. It's a great question. Why? Mm -hmm. okay. it, it, it's a great question. Why me? Why me is a great question. Because you are you. Mm -hmm. There is nobody else. Mm -hmm. Why me? There's nobody else. Nobody else can do it for you. Mm -hmm. we, yeah. We've got to, we, we've got to do these things ourselves. If and if they won't do it, you have to do it.
Yeah, yeah. If they if, don't if they if they don't wash the dishes, you have to wash the dishes. If they don't make the bed, you have to make the bed. Otherwise, okay. your bed is never made. Okay. So, and I should do it all the time. Um. As long as there is no obvious you know, physical danger to a person in that situation, I would say yes. Because mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's ever wrong to express the fact that you love somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that the alternative is distance and that's not going to solve anything because more leads to more and less leads to less if someone loves you less than you love them then you have to love them more does it work um is every meal you cook a great meal no it's individual mm -hmm. okay <laughs> look at look, 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 You go to the doctor and the doctor says, here's a pill, take this. And you say, does it work? And the doctor's like, might work. You know, you have a headache, you take a pill. Is this going to work? It might work. Mm. The alternative is what? Inactivity, nothing, doing the same thing that you've always done. Um, being being insulted and, and <laughs> having bad feelings, you know, sitting in the corner. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, um, action tends to accentuate reality. And what I mean by that is that you get a clearer picture of how everything is. Mm -hmm. You get a clearer picture. If you, you, you don't get more by pouring in less. Mm-hmm. You only it's, get more it's, by pouring It's usually in more. the reaction. Okay, if you don't give me, I won't give you anything. <laughs> like this is often something like this, isn't it? Well, that's punishment. Punishment, no? That's, that's punishment. You know, it's uh, that's withholding. Mm -hmm. Withholding, withholding is a kind of punishment. Mm -hmm. But you know, your partner is withholding, and that's you think that he's punishing you. He's not. He's punishing himself. Mm -hmm. So. Um, That, and you can understand that, but he can't. So what our partners are not able to comprehend, we must comprehend for them. Okay. Mm. It, 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 it's inevitable. Look, if you lose the use of your leg or legs and you can't walk, your partner must walk for you. That is the nature of a partnership. Mm-hmm. You have to carry each other. Mm-hmm. And you can't survive not carrying each other. Mm-hmm. You can't. And um, it, it's, I, I would always say that it's worth the effort putting in more energy because living with this idea in the back of your mind that I could have tried harder but I didn't, is that's a disease in the mind. Mm-hmm. That will kill you later on. Yeah. That If will kill you. you get up and you maybe you in the first moment what's, you say, thank what, God, thank what's, what's killing him? Sorry, I, I, I have to say this. What's killing him is the fact that he, in the back of his head, he's got, I could have tried harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what's killing him. Don't, yeah. let, that, don't let that kill you. Mm-hmm. Don't make the same mistake. When I was 15, here's a stupid story for you. When I was 15, I played in a basketball tournament. Mm -hmm. And we got to the final. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the game, the scores were level. And so we had this, uh, we had uh, like a penalty shootout with basketball, you know, free throws. You know, and I had the shot to win the championship. Mm -hmm. I had the shot to win. I had the, I had the power. I had the control. 
and I missed. Mm. I missed and we lost. Mm -hmm. And if I had put it in, we would have won. Mm -hmm. And I missed and we lost. <laughs> and I was just, I just, I was, I was, I was destroyed, like emotionally. I was like 50. I was just like, oh, I can't, I can't, oh. Destroyed and angry, and still, it's still like like 30 years later. I can still remember it. Yeah, and and what what bothers me is not that I missed. It's that if I had trained harder and practiced more, I could have done it. Mm-hmm. But I didn't train harder and I didn't practice more. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't want to live with this idea that will, you know, it's a virus, it's a disease, it eats the brain. If only I had tried harder. Well, it's too fucking late for him, and excuse my language, and you can't do anything about it. The past is dead, you have to move on, you have to, you have to live with it. Mm -hmm. And you can't punish your future. You can't punish your present partner for your own, for, you know, we, the, the pain we cause in other people is just a mirror of the pain that we can't express in ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so when a person can't love the most humane thing that we can do is show them how to love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can't, we can't make, we can't force other people to do things that they don't want to do. But in relationships, sometimes that forces us to do for them what they cannot do for themselves. Okay. And it will only accentuate reality. Mm-hmm which is it will make everything more clear and put everything in more perspective. Mm -hmm. And it has to be talked about as well. Mm -hmm. It has to be... It, 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 lack of communication kills everyone and everything. Mm -hmm. That which does not communicate is dead already. Mm. So there needs to be communication and it doesn't have to be direct communication it can be indirect communication you know you can you can put a vase full of flowers on a table right mm-hmm full of roses <laughs> okay roses yeah whatever you can put a vase full of flowers on a table that's indirect communication mm -hmm. right? that, that's yeah. yeah you know I would like to have roses on my table so I buy roses and put them on the table Absolutely, and that communicates an idea. You mm -hmm. know, it's uh, you're changing your environment, and so mm -hmm. everyone who comes into that space is going to be affected by that. And the environment affects uh, who we are and how we feel much more than we could ever even imagine. Mm -hmm. um, it's always there. It's always there, and you know, we and and we carry it with us. That's why the the home environment of the past is. Uh, is, is always very, very visible in our ability to manage the present. Mm 